So basically, the C9 is like my life. See, I have like double double stamp, you know, like from yesterday and from today. Even, oh, yeah. Probably from last week, from last Tuesday, from last Friday, maybe Saturday. I remember. Like my friends, Nora, Kenny, Nathan. Mm -hmm. I did these friends here. She did at us C9. here. <laughs> Hi, my name is Plus Dealer. I'm one of the owners of the DC9 nightclub. Back in 2003, a friend of mine and I decided we would like to go into the nightclub business and started looking around for different spaces. After searching for a while, uh, we found this spot, which was at the time called Club Hollywood, located at 1940 9th Street. Uh, in Northwest Washington, D.C. And after looking around in it, I knew that from the get-go, this was the place that I thought would be a great spot to have live music and dance parties. In the years, we've come to have an idea that we wanted to have uh, up-and-coming bands and dance parties that focus mostly on emerging artists as opposed to having uh, cover bands perform. I think that's pretty much what we're known for is emerging artists and pop bands that haven't quite made the jump to a venue like Black Cat or Android Club. We have a monthly event called Nerd Night, which is sponsored by uh, two people. They select three speakers that come in and speak about different subjects that they're passionate about. Um, everything from bug sex to um, tornadoes to volcanoes to whales. In between each one of the speakers, um, they'll pick a band to perform. and. Um, usually they're local bands, sometimes they're out-of-town acts that are quite good. Um, and all for the price of 10 bucks. So it's really a good time, uh, almost always sells out, and it's a lot of fun. Um, some of the regular dance parties that we've had are uh, a party called Liberation, which um, played music very current music and uh, music videos of the bands that they were um, playing. Uh, another dance party that we have is 90s music dance party called Peach Pit, which the promoter and DJ is gay and it draws a mostly gay crowd. A lot of fun, no problems, and you'd be surprised at how many songs you actually know and will sing to. hear a lot in the monitors and there's monitors. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> monitors, which is a plus, yeah. And, you know, people have been really nice to us here and mm -hmm. it's, it's been a good experience. His stage setting is great, you know, it's a little elevated from the crowd but not too much. 
It's mm -hmm. a little blinding in the lights, but you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it comes and goes. Some people like to see people look them in the eye, others like that kind of mystical beings out there. <laughs> I like to confront people out of it. You know. My name is Jake Starr, and uh, my band, Adam West, chose DC9 to play their final farewell show. We did a European tour in 2008, and we came back, and a week later we played our farewell show here and sold out the place. So, uh, I support DC9. I've known Bill Spieler for 25 years or more, um, and a lot of people that work here, and uh, it's a great club, and it's great food, and I think it's cool. It's very eccentric and original, and I like it. Mm. Yeah, it's creative. I like the way that it's not mainstream in some way. Especially when you hear the band for the first time, you don't know what they are. But you can connect to it and you like it. I like Nerd Night. Mm. Nerd Night's a good event. They pick good bands usually. They pick uh, good artists to hear and watch in between the Nerd Night presentations. The event is more important to me than the club itself. But it's you know it's it's low drama, it's low frills, mm -hmm. and I've I've come here before just to meet up for drinks with people here because of that. It's dance party. Yeah, cool box this party. You heard it here first. Yeah. Uh, come to the Liberation Dance Parties on Friday nights. Oh. It's, it's great. It's uh, my favorite uh, place to hang out on a Friday night in DC, actually. It's got a lot of fun music, fun people. Hi. My friends want to say hi. 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 Is a place where people can come, hang out, uh, talk with their friends. They can order food. We have a full bar that you can order drinks from. On the second floor, our main focus is the entertainment of the venue, and we'll have either uh, bands perform or DJs spinning music and people dancing. On the first level is uh, another area where people can congregate. Uh, order drinks, um, eat food from our food menu. So now we're going to the first floor where people can come in, hang out in any one of the booths here, or uh, hang out at the bar. We have a jukebox that plays tunes. It's an internet jukebox, and you can choose many songs, even very current songs, uh, to play. Uh, we also have a couple televisions you can watch uh, sporting events or um, just regular television or sometimes we'll show what's happening on the second floor along with audio down here. Um, if you didn't get a ticket, you can come down here and actually watch the event and eat food. A lot of promotion but a lot of it especially local acts is about getting your friends and people that know your music to come out luckily we work with certain um, booking agencies that have bands that um, are, are quite popular so we'll have um, we're able to promote certain bands that people already know and they want to come out to see it's a combination of um, agencies that we work with, whether it be Windish or uh, CSS or the agency group, um, or just bands that we are friends with. If you don't have any label representation, if you don't have, uh, I recently found this out, if you don't have a review on Pitchfork, which is a popular online uh, blog and magazine basically, um, you, you can't even be represented by any booking agency whatsoever, unless it's like DIY brown. Figure out where you're going, then you corral local acts, you know, in that area to play. They all say, yes, we want to play the show. And then you then contact the venue and say, hey, I have me and these other local bands and we 
want to put on a show at your venue, then they, you know, will okay it if they have that date available. And then, you know, the rest is just rock and roll as far as that goes. Uh, there can be a band that you would think matches what you're trying to do, and then, you know, you find out that their crowd... It's not the same, yeah. Even though musically you may be similar, their crowd might be a completely different bag than what you're out there really looking for. Yeah. So, you'll say, hey, this band's going to be great, all this, we're going to have new fans, because, you know, we're a great match, and then, you know, they're very poo-poo on you. And not to say we had that experience, per se, but it's, it's the idea that there are... You don't know that scene, you don't know, you know, what band's popular in what circles, you know, who the in-band is, who the out-band is, so, um, you know, you could put together two bands you think are practically identical and they've never played with each other and they never even thought about it, so, it's, it's kind of interesting in that aspect, but it's like doing market research with a very skewed idea of what exactly you're even looking at, but... So basically there's a lot of like almost business and logistics and marketing involved, you know, in these things. And a lot of people don't see it, they, they, they just see rock and roll bands as like these complete like retards, half cocked, on drugs, going out. And yeah, that is some bands, but there's got to be somebody in a band that understands the business, marketing, logistics. I'm trying to keep the ticket price as low as possible. Um, I think it makes a difference on whether people can come out and see a show. Um, I, when I was very young, there used to be a three dollars, three bands, and um, you'd see a lot of people come out for those kind of shows. Unfortunately, because of all the economic issues that venues have nowadays, those kind of events you'll probably never see again. Um, but we try to keep a, a seven to eight dollar, depending on band. Sometimes it goes up as high as ten. Um, but we try to keep it as low as possible. The same with our ticketing fees. We look for companies that keep a low ticketing fee, um, as opposed to some of the higher ones like Ticket. To, to cover our costs, but not to make a profit from it. Um, I know there are companies that will actually add on fees to the price of the ticket, and we prefer not to do that. As long as I've been in the music industry, um, I believe the best way to, to make money is off our food sales. Um, I, I think sometimes ticket prices are frustrating to fans, and that's why we try to keep our, our prices so low. So um, I certainly could make money off of it in the future, uh, off of ticket prices, but I, I think the music, the DC9 venue, is going to choose not to make um, much money off of it, if any. Enough money to cover our costs, and that's about it. Most of the money go, does go to the artists. Any, any money that we, we can give to the artists is what we're going to do. Tickets went on sale a month ago. So in order for us to sell tickets through a box office, we have to pay somebody to be here from 9 to 5 every day for a month. So the amount of money that we're spending on that staff isn't worth it in the long run. Like, we're losing money eventually over all the tickets because we can only sell 200 the most we can sell. So you're talking a $10 ticket, a $5 ticket, we're only bringing in, you know, $400 or $1,000. Now we got to pay somebody $2,000 to sit here and take tickets. It doesn't add up. How do I like the transaction fees? I, I actually not, feel really strong I do that not, they suck. Yeah, I do not like transaction fees. <laughs> That's my one. I do not like transaction fees. And even 
websites other than Ticketmaster, they have transaction fees, but they 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 act like they're all alternative and acting off the grid. But, uh, but they still have as high transaction fees as Ticketmaster does, so it's not much of a not much of a change. Dollar. Okay. The way service fees used to work is you call up Ticketmaster, right? Mm -hmm. And they would be like, okay, you want tickets to this show. They would physically put tickets in an envelope and mail them to you. You needed staff, you needed postage, you need envelopes, you need an office, you need all these other things. So it made sense. A couple bucks, five bucks to mail the tickets to you. Perfectly acceptable. Now we've got the internet. All you need to do is run a server and set up a website and all this other stuff. There's nobody physically stuffing envelopes. It's just will call. All they do is they forward us a list. So you're talking about a will call at a festival with 10,000 people. You've got to now mail out 10,000 tickets to all these people. That's the overhead is a lot. I mean, you could imagine mailing out 10,000 tickets over the course of a month. That's going to cost you thousands of dollars in staff, in envelopes, and in all your overhead. Now, you don't need to do that. You go on a website, you put your credit card info, and done. But the service fees go up and up and up, but there's no need for it. You gotta wait, and you gotta hope that somebody either bought too many, or they can't get in because their ID's expired or something stupid. So. Sold out, sold out. There's nothing you can do about it, you know. Yeah. Well, the best, the best thing is uh, there's usually a healthy market of uh, of ticket sellers outside the the venue. Um, for so even for shows that you really want to see, you can, you can usually buy a ticket uh, even after the fact. So uh, like, when do you usually like go to like? Oh, the like tickets? the day of, like like six or seven on the day. Of. Uh, if the concert is sold out, you just can come here and like to talk to random people and eventually they will give you the ticket. It takes three and a half years. You just text your number. You but just after three and a half and years, you, you can come here for free anytime you want. Guys. I don't know just guys. come here as much as I don't. Once a week, every week. That's and in three and a half years, you don't have to pay for anything. Yes.